This is Psych Boost helping you with your psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on language and in this 15th GCSE video we're going to be covering human and animal. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for all of your help guys. To join them, follow the link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. Here are, as usual, the GCSE specification topics we're going to cover in this video. As we go through the video, they're going to be in red. So you're going to need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. Let's begin. Let's start by considering the communication abilities of animals. Now, in comparison to complex human language, observation of animals suggests they can only communicate on a limited number of areas. Four we should consider are survival, reproduction, territory and food. Now starting with survival, animals that live in groups and are preyed on tend to have an alarm call that can warn other members of its group that they've spotted a predator. Meerkats actually have a range of calls they will make depending on the type of predator. So if it's an eagle in the air or a jackal on the ground. The alarm call will also vary depending on the distance the predator is from the group. Meerkats will also use body language to indicate the direction of the threat. Communicating reproduction is important, as many female animals can only get pregnant at certain times of the year. This can be communicated to males by the use of pheromones, so these are chemical signals that males can smell. Female animals can also use body language to display fertility. Males will also communicate reproductive fitness with body language and courtship rituals. Animals will often fight to protect their territory, but to avoid that conflict, they can use scent signals to mark territory so other members of its species can avoid the area. Some predators hunt for food in packs and coordinate their attacks with sound. Examples are wolves and killer whales. Honeybees use a waggle dance to show the location of food from the hive. So, while animal communication can be impressive, there are some fundamental differences between human and animal communication. Of course, we can use language to talk about a wide number of topics, not just those linked to survival and reproduction. But it's not just the number of topics, it's how we talk about those topics that's different. While animals communicate in response to the world around them, humans can imagine how the world could be and talk about that. For example, animals might sound an alert about the presence of a predator, but humans can think about what they can do to avoid predators in the future. This ability to plan ahead and then discussing those plans with other humans allows us to predict future events and prepare for them. The complexity of human language also allows communication of abstract concepts, such as justice, culture, and the exchange of goods for currency. Because of the complexity of human spoken language, we rely less on body language and other types of signaling. Many animals have much more complex body movements that communicate status, fertility and aggression. Now you might not expect insects to have much of a communication system, but a researcher called Von Frisch shared the Nobel Prize for his work on honeybee communication. Von Frisch's aim was to investigate how honeybees communicated the location of food through movement. His method was to construct a glass beehive so he could observe and record the bees' movements. He fed the bees sugar water from locations away from the hive. When the bees visited those locations, he would mark them with paint so they could be identified back at the hive. Von Frisch found that when the bees returned to the hive, their movement patterns were related to the distance the sugar water was from the hive. If the food was less than 100 metres away, the bees would do a round dance. They would turn in a circle from left to right. But if the food was more than 100 metres, the bees would do a waggle dance, moving forwards, waggling their abdomen from side to side. They would then turn the circle to the left, and then they would repeat the movement, but then turn to the right. On the basis of these results, he concluded that the bees communicate using movement to identify the location of food. So let's evaluate Von Frisch's bee study. Firstly, and very positively, the bee study has been replicated a number of times, with the same results showing we can trust the findings. We may criticise the study in lacking validity. The bees' behaviour might not have been the same as wild bees that feed from flowers, not sugar water, and the beehive is transparent. 
which might be a problem, but it's not like the bees know we're watching. Bee law number one, absolutely no talking to humans. All right, launch position. We can actually criticise the study for underestimating bee communication. The role of sound has since been found to be important in bee communication, with researchers recording the noise produced from the bees dancing. And some theories suggest the bees are able to produce cognitive maps, including memories of landmarks. Not bad for a creature with a brain the size of a pinhead. Now that we've covered the content, you need to be able to use all that information to actually answer questions. Here are five questions I've made to test your skills. So, pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together an additional bonus video showing you how to answer these properly. For everyone else, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video on language, nonverbal communication.